What's up guys, Justin here with the CG Essentials. So, so in today's video, we're gonna check out a new add-on from Polygonic that contains a ton of super useful interiors models for Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, I apologize for being gone for so long. It's probably gonna stay this way for a little while. I just don't have enough time in the day to keep updating this channel and also my SketchUp channel. So I've been doing my best, but I just had to kind of like ramp things back a little bit. So I'll be back on and off. Um, I still wanna release my CG Essentials course. I just haven't quite gotten there yet. So um, in today's video though, we're gonna check out this Internic collection from the guys over at Polygonic. And so this is basically a collection of interiors assets. So these are assets designed to be used in your models um, for rendering uh, things like cabinets, things like uh, sofas and chairs and other things like that. One of the reasons that I'm taking a look at this is just because the quality of stuff from Polygonic is always pretty high. So I do like to make videos about their stuff when it comes out just because they do a really good job. And so what I wanted to do is just kind of scroll through, show you how to install it, a little bit of what's involved or what's um, included, and then uh, kind of go from there. So feel free to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, there are three license types. There's the starter, which is just going to give you a few of the assets right here. There's the light version, which is a little under 50%. And then there's the full version right here. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think they list what contains what um, down below. Um, so they don't really show that, but um, that's kind of the way that they've got this split up. I will link to that in the notes below. Note that is an affiliate link. So if you do end up purchasing that link, I do receive a commission. But the way this is gonna work is this is gonna work through their Ingon asset browser, right? And so what that does is that makes installation pretty easy. So if we hop over into Blender, right? And we're gonna go, and I kind of stopped in the middle of this. So you could see how I was gonna do it. So the first thing you need to do is download and install Ingon. So Ingon, you can find, Ingon you can find just by clicking on this big link right here. It'll take you to the Ingon page and it's free to download. So you can just download that and install it like you would any other add-on, which I guess with Blender 4.2 and beyond, people might still be confused about that. You can click on the little drop down right here, click on install from disk, and then go find the zip file for Ingon. So once you do that, what this is gonna do is this is gonna give you the ability to install polygonic asset packs. And so the way that works is if you click on the button for install asset pack, you can go find that internic pack um, that comes along with this. So if I click on this option right here, you can pick where you're gonna install that. I keep all of mine. I keep all of mine on a portable hard drive so that I can take it with me, um, which may or may not be something that's actually recommended, but that's how I do it. I'm gonna click on select path right here, and it's gonna tell you that it's going to install the contents. Once we do that, we're gonna go ahead and click on okay. That's going to install that asset pack to your computer. So you're gonna have to wait a minute because that is installing like 650 megabytes of files into that folder. Um, so give it a minute and then this should show up. Okay, so then we're gonna click on okay. That asset pack is now going to show up in here, right here. Now you can go find other asset packs that you had in the past. I'm not gonna to talk too much about that for right now, but what this means is this means that now this is going to be available in your computer. So if you tap the end key with that end gone enabled, that polygonic window is going to show up, right? You have to make sure end gone's enabled, but then if you click on browse assets, what this is gonna do is it's going to want you to pop up a window. So probably the best way to do this is to drag a window off to the side and do it over here. So we're gonna click on browse assets. That's gonna set this to the polygonic window right here. And you're gonna see all of the different things contained inside of this tool in the polygonic asset browser. If you do have other tools in here like polygonic or something like that, um, that's going to show up here as well. But the way that works is say you wanna bring something in like this accent armchair, you just click on the button right here in order to spawn that. And that's gonna bring that in to Blender. And so if we take a look at this asset, and so one of the cool things about these is if you click in here and you look at this, you go over to the uh, polygonic window right here, you can actually adjust the colors associated with this. So notice how I can change this so that it's whatever color that I want inside of the rendered space right here. Now there's also some secondary colors in here. If we adjust the secondary colors, notice how in this case, it's going to be the trim, right? And you can make that brighter or less bright um, by using the color wheel right here. So um, in this case, it's gonna be the trim, but for some of these other models, it might be something different, right? So if we bring in this armchair right here, I'm just gonna move this guy over. 
And so one thing to kind of pay attention to when you're bringing stuff like this in is the colorization factor. So like for example, say I've got this and I wanna make it a little bit more of a color, right? So something kind of like this. Notice how nothing is happening in here. You need to adjust the colorization factor like this in order to set how this is going to be colorized, right? So same thing here. If you wanted this to be some kind of a colored metal, you need to make sure that you toggle that factor up right here. You can set the strength of the factor in here, but these are going to be editable so that you can adjust those colors. And so if you do wanna see more of these, you can kind of drag over like this in order to adjust the size um, of those objects inside of the material library right here. But you can see how you've got different chairs, you've got bedrooms, like for example, this one is like a full bedroom setup. So if I click and bring this in, all right, this is like a complete bedroom setup that comes with a bed. It's got the two end tables. It's got um, the closets on the side over here with the materials all set up and ready to render like this. Um, now there are light adjustments in here and actually let's take a look at that because that's actually pretty cool. So I'm going to delete out the lights that I added but notice how this object right here these are actually set up to be emissive materials. So if I tap um, or actually let's jump over into EV or uh, cycles. So we're going to go to cycles right here. I'm going to change this to GPU render. Do a little bit of denoising but some of these are set up with like emissive materials, right? So if I come in here and set this to like 10,000, and so notice how this is actually going to emit light in your scene, and you can adjust things like the colorization of that light, right? So notice how I can adjust this so that it puts off a red light or whatever. And I don't have any walls in here to catch this, otherwise you'd see it a little bit more, but these actually do have lighting pieces associated with them in your render as well. And so this actually does have support for the native asset browser as well, if you'd rather use that. Um, notice how these come in here and they're all organized this way. So a lot of the time I tend to use more the asset browser right here, but it's got different fabric materials. It's got objects for like purses that you can put on tables. It's got food and drink, a uh, ton of furniture in here. So I really like these cabinets, for example. Um, so if I wanted to take one of these cabinets, I could just drag it into the scene and it's good to go, right? It's gonna take a second to compile those materials, but when it's done, you're gonna have this full on cabinet. like this. And again, the materials are all set up and mapped properly. So you can just drop this into your scene and render with it really quickly. All right, so here's an example of a scene that's been built using these assets. So um, if you look at them, right, they've got really high quality textures. Um, they've been modeled in a way that they actually look really good. And so these are pretty high quality interiors models. You can see how these are set up with like the wood grains going the right direction. Um, everything is set up so that it reflects properly. And um, it's just good for, um, for populating all of those different scenes. And so one of the things they've really worked on is trying to have the optimized geometry in here so these aren't super heavy. Now, depending on what you bring in, I mean, obviously there's certain things that require certain amounts of geometry, but overall, if you bring these in and look at them, they're not super heavy from a geometry standpoint. So they've really tried to pay attention to optimization with this release, um, which I think is pretty cool. But if you scroll through, I mean, you've got access to like tables and chairs. And again, I mean, if you look at these chairs, right, these are gonna be set up with the actual um, materials set up the way that they're supposed to look. So your wood grains are gonna go the correct directions, which is one of my like pet peeves with models is when wood grains don't align the way that the wood would actually work. They've actually gone in here and tried to set these up so that they look the way that they're supposed to. But you've got like dinnerware, you've got different dressers. Um, so just all sorts of different things in here to help you um, populate those interiors models. And then I do also like the presets um, because these are already set up with like place settings and things like this. So you could actually take this and just drop it into your model without having to do any work. So if you've got like a dining room set or something like that, I'm gonna move this down a little bit. 
But if you've got a dining room or something like that, you can use this to populate that really quickly just by dragging these. And a couple things with Ngon. So if you bring this in and it's up in the sky, for example, you can actually just click on the transform selection to ground right here. That's more a function that was built for like botanic, but if you do want to do randomization, you've got the option in here to do that. Um, the scatter function, you probably don't need for your interiors, but it is in Ngon. But then if you do need to take one of these, and when you first bring it in, um, if it comes in non-editable and you want to edit the geometry, you can just pick the option for convert selection to editable, right? So if it comes in as a linked, you can't actually tab in here and adjust it. But if you click on this option for editable and then tab in here, you can come in here and you can make changes. So if you didn't want to make any changes or adjustments, you can change these to editable objects. But again, just note that you can do colorization on things like this. So for example, if I wanted to colorize this so it's more like a painted chair, you could just adjust the color, adjust that factor up like this, and notice how it's going to colorize it to whatever you want. So you can also adjust these and pick different colors and things like that directly within the model. And so for things like the dining tables and chairs, right, you would have to kind of adjust that to editable, and then you can kind of pick these up separately. So then you could come in here and you could adjust parts and pieces of this object. And so this table and chairs is a great example of where you would have to adjust this to editable before you could really make that change because you don't want to colorize everything in this model, though this is set up where it's really only adjusting um, the actual colors of the seats. So that would actually probably work fine. But if you did want to do just the chairs or something like that, you could change those to editable right here. And you could either select one and edit it, or if you pick multiples up like this, so if I pick up all these chairs, right? So shift click, shift click, shift click like this. And then I do an edit all selected. This is gonna change all of those selected objects at once. So you can come in here and make edits to multiple different objects just like this. Or if you wanna put it back, you can select these, change them back to linked, and it's going to change them back to whatever it's linked to here in the library. All right, so depending on what you're looking for, it's a great collection of interior assets that are render ready. So um, if you're looking for a quick way to fill out those scenes, you could definitely check this out. I will link to it on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.